Hello everyone, this is the CS Revelation. Welcome to a new video. Today's video is going to focus on SQL aggregate functions. Uh, and in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do SQL scalar functions. So some of the useful functions that we're going to go over today are the average, the count, the max, the min, and the sum. Uh, now, in order for us to practice these, I'm using this database, uh, which is composed of four tables. Now, I have shared with you the code to create the tables and insert data into them below in the description. So before you uh, follow the rest of this video, you could pause now and just simply go ahead and create these tables, then insert the data into them. You simply go to highlight each one of these and execute it. Uh, separately in the same order I have listed these tables you will create them and in the same order uh, I've listed these SQL insert blocks uh, you're going to execute them as well okay so now assuming that you have created these tables and inserted the data into them let's just get started now um, these aggregate functions are usually used with a select statements if you take a look at the project table here which is the last table at the bottom here um, we have a column here called project budget. Now these are all the projects that we have. So we have four projects in total and each project has a budget. Now suppose that your task or your goal is to find out the average uh, budget amongst all of these. So you're going to do a select. Uh, you're going to use your function average AVG. In parentheses you're going to List the column for which you are going to calculate the average. So it's project budget. And uh, of course that you have to mention from what table is this column coming from. That is the project table. Uh, and that's it. So if you just simply execute this, you're going to get uh, an average total. Let me just run this. So there you go. So this is the average of all the budgets, which is almost 18,000. Uh, now, uh, in addition that you could also uh, modify the way the name of this column is listed. So you can format it differently by using the as uh, keyword here and then just in quotes, put the new name for that column to be displayed. So I can basically just type average budget, which is going to be a better um visual so if i run this now it says average budget is this value now um you can also do for example you could find the maximum budget out of all these budgets so simply you're going to use the max uh function so it's max uh, and then here i'm going to type maximum Okay, so now when we run this, we should get the maximum budget. So the highest budget, which is 24,500 is the highest amongst all these budgets. Uh, also, you could do the min to find the minimum budget. By the way, it's not case sensitive. So you could put lowercase, uppercase, does not really matter. Uh, the minimum is 12,000. You could also find the sum of all these budgets across this column. So across this column is going to sum up all these budgets. And this is going to be some uh, budgets. So I could basically run this and it's going to tell me the sum budget is 72,650. There's one more thing that you can actually do uh, is that you can uh, run all these functions in just one select statement. So you could simply separate them with commas. So you could say, okay, I'm going to find the sum and then I'm going to find the average. So you could separate them with commas. And then you're going to find, let's say like the minimum. Uh, I'm only going to modify the names for the first ones. So they say minimum and then comma, you want to find the maximum, right? So by doing this, uh, I'm going to find four totals here. Uh, so I'm gonna run this. When you run it, you get four totals. So there's the sum budget, average budget, the minimum, and the maximum. And these are the values that we have generated for each one of those uh, functions. Uh, uh, one more thing that you could also do with these functions is that you can actually have a conditional calculation. So for example, say that our task is to find, uh, to count how many 
uh, for example, pro uh, projects. So we're going to find out how many projects are greater than, say, $15,000 budget. So uh, we are counting. Counting what? We are counting the rows. So I can put a star there or I could put one of the column names and say count the rows uh, from the table, which is project. Uh, where this condition is met, right? So I'm going to add a condition here. So the condition will be where project budget is greater than uh, 15,000, right? So this is going to count all the rows that have a project budget greater than 15,000. So it's going to look through all these rows and find out which ones satisfy that condition and then count it. So now we get three total, three that are greater than 15,000. Um, I can actually select all of those. So I can basically do this just to confirm. Uh, so let's just list all the project titles that have a project budget in addition to also the project budget. So let's list the project title and the project budget who have a budget that is greater than 15,000. So when we run this, we get these three projects and these are their budgets and they're all greater than 15. So we were correct that the total count is three. Uh, now, all of this is just involving a single table, right? So we're involving just single tables in our calculations. Uh, in future videos, I will show you how to uh, handle multiple table queries. Now, uh, one more thing, uh, also you could do grouped totals. For example, let's take a look at the table employee here uh, and let's try to find out. So say the question is to uh, find how many, uh, let's say employees are uh, working for department number four, right? So we're trying to find how many employees are working for the department with the number four. So now, like I said, the best way to solve this is, you know that you're fetching data here. So that means it's a select statement. Just put the structure, just the default structure, which is select from where. And like I said in my previous videos is that the first thing that needs to be answered is the from part. So where do we get this data from? So we're counting how many employees. And in addition, that we are uh, finding out the ones that satisfy the condition of a department equal to four. So department number is an employee table and the employees are an employee table. So technically we're getting all this data from the employee table. So that's the easiest part. And then the where part, uh, that's where we filter out. That's that's the second thing that has to be uh, answered. And that's uh, finding out uh, the condition. The condition is that they, are, they have to be working for department number four. So that means the department, the department uh, number is equal to four, right? And what is it that we're doing? We are counting how many employees. So we're going to do count star or you can do count star or you can actually put a column name here at uh, best column usually is the primary key of that table i'm going to put employee number so technically it's saying count how many employee numbers uh, are associated with department four so if i do this manually this is department four so it's listed here this department number uh, employee number is associated with it and again here this employee number is associated with it and again here this employee number is associated with it. So technically there's three of them. So let's see if this confirms our findings. So it says here, the count of the employees is three that work for department four. Now, what if the question was to find, uh, find the total number of employees per department number? So in this case, we are going to find multiple totals. So each department number is going to have a total number of employees. Now, just take it from me. It, whenever you have a question that has the per 
or for each, right? Or for each, these two keywords are basically telling you you're going to be using a group by, right? So it's going to be select. We're going to count. We're going to make a count. Uh, wait, let me just do the same thing. So I'm going to do select from. Uh, and so where do we get this data from? It's going to be employee table. And uh, what is it that we are doing? Like I said, because it is a grouped uh, total, it's going to be grouped by. So you're going to use the group by. What is it grouped by? Because it says for each, that means group by department number. For each department number, group by department number. So I'm going to do department number here. That's the column I'm grouping by. And if you list a column here in the group by, it must be also listed in the select part. Just remember that. So that means I must put department number here and then comma. What do I want? I want a count of employees. So count of employee numbers, for example, or count star. Now this is going to give me grouped totals. Uh, okay, wait, employee underscore T. Okay. So that is the correct name for the table. Now, when we run it, this is what we get. So remember uh, that the this is the department number, which is the first column that we wanted to list. And the second column is going to be the count of these employees. So for each department here, so for example, four, uh, we have three employees. Uh, and then 28 has... Uh, how many 28 has three employees so this is 28 this is another 28 this is another 28 and it has another employee so and department nine which is this one has james uh and that is one employee uh it looks like we have an employee here in our uh employee table that has no department that they work for so let me confirm that uh so select star from employee just to see how the employee table look like uh, i think i added another column that i forgot to add in the erd model here so yeah um see here tim small has no department that they work for so technically we have eight rows but here it's only showing seven of them okay so it's missing tim small from the erd model so yeah so this was correct is that it is listing all the department numbers but for each department number we have a count right so for four we have three employees for 28 we have a three employees and for nine we have only one employee but there is one employee that has no department that they work for okay all right so this is how you use the group by okay so let's say the next question is to find uh the number of projects that the number of projects that let's say employee with id with ID, let's say one zero 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 one is working for. Okay, find the number of projects that employee with ID one one is working for. So that uh, so if we're talking about employee ID and we're talking about works for, so this is the project, this is the employee, and this is the table that represents the working for. So this is called the participation table. Now, um, so this table here, we have the employee number and we have the projects that is associated with them. So we're interested in 1001. So this is one row. So let me just draw here. So this is one row that is associated with uh, 1001. Here's another row associated with 1001. Uh, yeah, so we only have two. And that means this employee is working for this project and also working for this project. Now we need to write code to figure that out. So it's a select statement, just simply do select from where, right? So 
where do we get this data from its participations table okay now where what's the condition the condition is given in the question here that the employee id must be equal to this so we will say employee id employee number is equal to 1001 right that's pretty simple you just follow this order and then you will be able to debug this and then select what? What are we selecting? We are counting how many projects, and that is going to be project code, right? So that is a project code. Okay, so now if I run this, I should get two, like we guessed it's two. Now, what if we wanted a grouped calculation? Like for each employee, we want the number of projects that they are working for. Like I said, uh, whenever you have for each or per, it's going to be a group by. So let's say the question is find the number of projects for each employee, right? So all this information is listed in the participations table. So um, I only need to write my select statement. So select from now where do we get the data from is participations table and uh, what do i want it's a it's a for each that means it's going to be a group by so group by what column is going to be for each employee that means we are grouping by the employee number so then because we group by it we must list it here as one column and what do we want we want a count a count of what a count of uh, project codes right so a count of project codes like how many project codes are associated with each employee number when we run this we should get group totals so notice that for each employee number we have a total count right so this employee has two this employee has one, this one has two, and this one has two, and so on, right? Okay. Now, uh, this was just a quick uh, video on uh, how to use aggregate functions. Uh, in the future videos, I will definitely show you more advanced uses for aggregate functions, especially when involving multiple tables. Uh, so it's going to be multiple table queries uh, involving uh, aggregate functions. But in the next video, after this one, we're going to discuss scalar functions. All right, so this is the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.